William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. A squabbling couple can always bury their differences. The question is, which of them doesn't mind uh, underground shelter? The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. Marriages may be made in heaven, but they sometimes can end in the city morgue. I know one that did. Almost, that is. A bridegroom the lucky wife loved so passionately, she kept trying to exterminate him. The pigeon's name was one to remember. Killer Bess. An ex-pugilist billed as the perfect specimen. He had forceps and biceps like that. And a chest expansion that reached clear to uh, Madagascar. Added to that, he'd read a book and memorized quite a vocabulary. I first met him in his hour of agony in the Cabana Adora, Eats Table d'Ote, where girls in short skirts and long stockings sold you cigarettes at $5 a pack. I was there with Trav Rogers celebrating his birthday. Even lieutenants of homicide have birthdays, if they live to see it, that is. Trav was living. The only immediate threat to his future was the steak he was wolfing. Mm. This food is all right. Tell me that again, Trav, when you see the check. <laughs> well, how many birthdays does a man have? One a year, the rumor is. Uh-huh. The place is crawling with celebrities. Yeah, I see. There's uh, Marshmallow Midas over there. Marshmallow Midas? The Hot Lips trumpet player. Oh. Say, I thought he was dead. His agent dug him up. A 40-week contract came along. You keep informed. Yeah, I'm a who's who. Over there, getting nicely potted, kill her best. Welterweight contender. Light heavy and ex-contender. He had his nose rebuilt and hung up his gloves. He uh, married into society, no? An educated guy for a fighter. He read Pilgrim's Progress and Frank Merriwell. A polysyllabic grunter. <laughs> you kill you. Uh-oh, Trev. What? Look at the killer change colors. Change colors? From rosy red to green. Oh, he's gagging. Gasping for breath. He's not gasping anymore, Trav. He's conked out. We next saw Killer Best in the Southmore Hospital, a private place where a checkbook society can recover from the sheer ordeal of living. The killer was no longer green in the face. He was blue. I let Trav Rogers hold bedside hands with him. I only listened. You were poisoned, Killer. Poisoned? But that's... Imp- Not only possible, but a proven fact. I had the sedimentation in your glass sent to chemical analysis. Somebody loaded your drink. But then if it was poison, why am I alive now talking to you? An excellent question. I've asked it too. There are a couple of likely theories on that. One, you have a certain immunity to a poison of this type. Or two, you hadn't taken enough of it to be fatal. I've... Got an awful stomachache. Oh, you imagine it. Your stomach's empty. It's been pumped here in the hospital while you were unconscious. When can I get up? When you can stand without falling down. Who did it? I don't know. Who are your enemies? No more, please. I've been pumped enough for one day. You uh, don't want the police involved, hmm? Now that you ask me, no. You fellas are too public. I don't want to be a public problem like highway repairs and sanitation. No thanks. Then, uh, might I suggest somebody confidential? Who? Oh. He's right here. Barry, make your sale. Barry Craig, killer, confidential investigator. I've got blue eyes and I'm kind to dumb animals. Not that I like to ambulance chase, but I'm all worn out looking for hen's teeth. <laughs> you mean clients are scarce? You've read my diary. And I read your, uh, value on the hoof. Meaning I've got money. Meaning I haven't got money. You're hired on condition that you keep wisecracking. And that I find out why you're marked for extinction? Yeah, that too. Uh, your friend here, the lieutenant... Trav uh, Rogers of Homicide. Send him away and then notify my wife for me. Mona Best, Lawrence 6, 4,000. What will I tell her? <laughs> 
that circumstances make it impossible for me to be home for dinner. I call the wife as requested to reassure her about the love of her life. Perfect specimen, killer best. Her more killed than killer husband. But Mona Best didn't need reassurance. A funeral would have delighted her. Hello? Mona Best? Yes, this is Mona Best. This is Barry Craig. Should I know the name? I've had Skyriders advertising it. I'm a detective. I've reported no robberies this month. We've got a comic routine going. I've got serious news, lady. I despise serious news. Do you love your husband? That is a leading question, Mr. Craig. Meaning you don't? I'm ambivalent. Too big a word for me. I love him and I loathe him. Which half of you is operating right now? The worst half. Then the bad news I've got will be good news to you. He's been arrested for public drunkenness. He's been hospitalized for public collapse. He was poisoned at the Cabana Adora. You want to console him, he's in room 602 in the Southmore Hospital, Midtown. Thank you for the invitation. But you won't come. I haven't time. I'm due for a pedicure. Besides, I haven't the inclination. Please give the fallen gladiator my anxious wish for his speedy demise. Some marriages can really be colorful. Back at the bedside, the killer showed a sense of humor. Hmm. She told you to throw dirt in my face. Bury me deep. She's bashful about her love. It embarrasses her. Her hard-hearted talk is a cover-up. You've got good sense, Craig. Have I? Mona is soft as mush. The surface is only a shell. I'm the love of her life, but as you say, she covers it. She talks tough through her martinis. It's the ancient female device. Keep the man guessing a little. Never let him take you for granted. I've heard of husbands kidding themselves like that. But we're avoiding the gruesome. Who tried to kill you? I wish I could tell you. For a starter, name me personal enemies with strong motives against you. Uh, no. No, meaning there aren't any? There are some. What man doesn't make enemies? So? I don't want to slander people... Make hysterical guesses about who hates me enough to want to murder me. You find out for me on your own. Don't even keep me posted. Just tell me the climax when you come to it. Until then, I want peace of mind. I want to drink with a friend without analyzing the contents of the glass. Dig into my life, Craig. Do your worst and best. Now, help me stand up and get dressed, please. The antiseptic smell around here is getting me sick. I did my worst and best, checking into the life and times of an ex-pug gone blue blood and social register. At headquarters, Trav Rogers had as many facts for me as I could digest. The uh, killer's history makes a fascinating story. I'll retire to a farm and write it at the age of 86. I know another book the intellectually inclined killer read. This is besides Pilgrim's Progress and Frank Merriwell? The author, Somerset Morn, a book titled Of Human Bondage. Do we have to go through with this aside? Oh, a learned note here and there. It adds a fillip to the ordinary crime puzzles. Okay, get it said. There is a passage in Of Human Bondage that likens life to a Persian rug. In your living, you weave a rug. Your experiences are threads to the rug. The author urges every man to make his life experiences colorful and exciting, so the rug will be a weaver's masterpiece of colored threads. And that was Killer Best. Every day, a color job. He's fought, laughed, brawled, wandered, loved, married, divorced, remarried. Like him or dislike him, he's at least annihilated monotony. Now some monotonous Mo wants to annihilate him. Who is the Mo, Trav? I'll give you a rundown. You can make your own choice of suspect. XYs with mutilated hearts and broken egos, the killer has three. All capable of the ultimate crime against an erstwhile spouse who loved and decamped. Men about town organized into a let's kill the killer club. There are a few of those. Killer best has been the snake in many a man's garden. A constitutional home record. I'll pass over a legion of waiters and taxi drivers whose jaws were damaged in early AM rhubarbs with killer best. I'll also pass over some 50 litigants who have sued Killer Best for every civil offense in Blackstone. Sued and lost, that is. But I will remark on his present helpmate. Mona. Once Mona Phipps. A tabloid once featured her as the uh, 
Society Borgia. Lucretia Borgia, the lady of ancient Rome who showed a talent with poison. Is that the reference, man? It is. It seems Mona, like her current husband, was also thrice wed. Two husbands were shed in Reno and Las Vegas. A third died mysteriously. Poison? The uh, case never stood up quite. His body was exhumed and the vital sent to autopsy. But? The exhumation took place three years after his death. Too late to prove poison. Yeah. There uh, is one more enemy of the killers worth remarking on. So remark. A lad named Polonius. Remember him? Vaguely. Wait. Kid Polonius. A prize fighter, wasn't he? Yes. A contender who ran afoul of the killer. They had a match. Polonius was knocked out in four rounds. So? Polonius lost the sight of one eye. After the fight, he accused the killer of having sprayed his gloves with a blinding chemical. Polonius sued and lost, then swore revenge. He attempted that revenge. In what way? A felonious assault on the killer with a knife. Polonius? Polonius. The uh, killer pressed charges... Polonius served 18 months in the workhouse. Polonius went free last week. Free one week and stewing over his misfortunes. Quite a lead there, Trav. You know, I think I'll go see Polonius pronto. Polonius Polonius took a lot of catching. His address was whereabouts unknown. The workhouse warden had no address on him and neither did his aged mother. I interviewed fighters, dice players, bartenders, and I came away with zero. Polonius and the American Buffalo, they both vanished from Times Square. When I located Polonius at long last, I'd lost two days of my fading youth and 50 bucks. The dough was for information. A bookie named Catastrophe had the address for a price. A fraternity building next door to a college. Polonius was the building janitor. Who's there? Open up, Polonius. I want to talk to you. Polonius had more equipment than a building janitor needed. He had a baseball bat, and he held it like Mickey Mantle. What do you want of me? The question should be, what do you want to do to me? I'm protecting myself. Against? False arrest. Cops hounding me out of a job. Cops making me pull up stakes and go every time I get set somewhere. Why would cops want to do that to you? They're doing it. You're here. Not to hound you. Good to hear. Then beat it. Before you beat my brains in? I didn't ask you here. No. I'll take the bat. Hey, let, let yeah. go. No. I... Okay, you win. I don't mind a little baseball fever, but my head's too big for a regulation ball. Now, what's really on your conscience, Polonius? Nothing. And don't ask me, did I poison the killer? You know about that, huh? It's in the papers. And a paragraph in the story reminding that I just finished serving time for trying to bump the killer two years ago. You didn't this time? No. I gave up thinking like that in the workhouse. Do a rap, you change your thinking. I imagine. You now feel uh, more kindly disposed toward the killer? I'd be a liar if I said I did. I hate him. I'd like to see him dead. Only I don't want to be the one who kills him. Why not? I've got a life to live. I can't live it in jail. I got this job here. I want to settle down to it. I got a girl. I want to get married, raise a family. Nice idea. But I won't be able to with somebody out to knock the killer off. He'll get it next time, and I'll be the goat. I'm a dog with a bad name now. They'll blame me. They'll blame me. Polonius wasn't as felonious as advertised. He'd given up on his deadly grudge against Killer Best, so he said, anyhow. When he came out of the weeps, he proved what a peaceable citizen he had now become. Uh, listen, Mr... Barry Craig. Mr. Craig, you can do a big thing for me. Like? Catch who poisoned the killer that other night. Nab whoever it was and take the heat off me. I'll be glad to oblige if I'm lucky. It happens to be my assignment. Well, make it your double assignment. Represent me, too. I'm expensive. Well, I got a hundred bucks. I was going to get a new suit and shoes, but I'll give it to you. Keep your money. If you're on the level, you'll come out okay, Polonius. I'm after the poisoner, and I figure to catch him. So long. Oh, yes. Here's your baseball bat. Buy yourself a horsehide ball out of that hundred the next time you get that urge to swing that bat.
I went back to my office where I always go to do my best thinking. In the horizontal on my leather sofa. Not my favorite sofa exactly. It had too much sag. But what can you expect when you buy things secondhand? There was no conclusion to my thinking after an hour or two. How could there be? I'd fallen fast asleep. The phone woke me up. Yeah? Sorry, this is Trav Rogers. As usual, right in the middle of my dreams. Are you still representing Killer Best? Misrepresenting him. I've so far done nothing for him but spend his money. Why do you ask? Only curiosity. I uh, thought you might be interested in his present whereabouts. Whereabouts? Let me see. It's four in the afternoon. He's toasting himself in his favorite spa. He is not? I give up. He's back where you commenced representing him. In the Southmore Hospital emergency. Not more poison. No. A near cave-in of his head. Near cave-in? A roof cornice narrowly missed him. From being narrowly missed by a roof cornice, you don't go to a hospital. Clever of you. The cornice missed him, but the dagger didn't. Oh, stupid of me. He was knifed two hours ago, a block or so from his residence, while out for an evening stroll. And, uh, Barry. Yeah? Polonius. You won't be visiting him at home for a while. Where will he be? Where he is. In jail. We caught him prowling in the general vicinity where the killer was knifed. In the hospital, some of the starch was out of the killer. He looked scared and trying not to show it. The knife gash on his shoulder and forearm seemed to hurt like the devil, even though the patient tried to grin. I've survived again. That's something to be thankful for. Two strikes. Next time up, somebody's out. See that it isn't me. I'm working in the total dock. You've got Polonius. You accuse him? Uh, no, I didn't actually see the knifer. That cornice that came down on you, uh, tell me more about it. Uh, There's not much to tell. I was out walking at the corner of 78th. Boom, came the cornice. It landed practically at my feet. The dagger came after? Yes, uh, three minutes later. I backtracked. I was one block from home when I got it from behind. The dagger wasn't found. So the police tell me. I'll have the area combed, inch for inch, sewers, cellars, places. You think my attacker might have thrown it away? They generally do. Get caught running, it's evidence against them on the spot. They're red-handed. I did make an outcry. I yelled police. My assailant would be running pell-mell. He no doubt would have ditched the deck. Craig. Yeah? When I'm out of here, put a man on me, day and night. An operative following me around heel and toe. I want protection. In the tombs, Polonius looked like he was on a marathon crying jag. Craig, get me out of here. If you merit it. You don't think I knifed the killer? Didn't you? Why were you prowling in the vicinity where the attack occurred? I... I was following the killer around to see who might attempt to kill him. I, I wanted to insure myself against being made somebody's fall guy. I thought I was to take care of that. Yeah, I know. You... You were representing me, but frankly, Mr. Craig, I had no confidence in you. I see. So I'm a schmo. Please, Mr. Craig, get me out of here. I'm afraid you're in for a while, at least. In? For nothing? Just for walking on a street? Just for climbing up on strange roofs and prying cornices loose. You, you lay that to me? Lie and you'll grow a long beard and stir. And what if, what if I tell the truth? I might intercede for you, get you paroled in my custody, after you've repented in here long enough. I only might, mind you. Okay. I dropped that cornice. You said you were cured. You'd given up seeking revenge. Yeah, I know I said, but there was the killer on a stroll for himself, dressed like an English lord and wearing a fancy vest and spats. My blood got hot. I, I looked at my crummy pants and the cardboard in my shoes. I thought of... How he used chemicals on those boxing gloves once and cost me a chance at the title, let alone this eye here. I I went up to the roof. It, it was temporary insanity, Mr. Craig. Plead with the judge for me like that. Only temporary insanity. I'm better now. <laughs> Was Polonius an honest man or a liar? I couldn't swear. 
But one thing was for sure, he was a character. I organized the search for the dagger used on Killer Bess. Look for a dagger in a square mile area, you really know suffering. No luck so far, Barry. It figured to be tough. I've got men in wading boots, sifting sewer slop, men emptying trash cans and poking into cellars. Nice cooperation, Trav. Thanks. Oh, don't be so egotistic. I'm doing this on behalf of the people of the city of New York. Oh, pardon me. The assailant may not have thrown his dagger away. They invariably do. Still. Oh, wait. Here comes Detective Wilson with a look on him that can only mean one thing. Eureka, he's found the dagger. Finding a dagger is one thing. Tracing it to its source is a horse of another breed. After the same 14 men, plus yours truly, got ourselves acute atrophy of the metatarsals, our aching feet, that is, we gave up canvassing storekeepers. Later, on an idea that didn't seem too bright to me, I tackled Mrs. Killer Best, Mona. Tried tackling, I mean. Mona wasn't home. Her social secretary, a good looker named Candy Joplin, was. Can I help you, Mr. Craig? Yeah. First, uh, where is Madame? Out. Just out? She didn't say where. I've got something here. A dagger. Ever see it? I'm not sure. You think you might have? Uh, yes. In a case in the library, I seem to remember a pair of antique daggers... Let's adjourn to the library. Is that the case? Yes. Well, what do you know? Here's the twin to the one I brought in. Who owns these daggers? Mr. or Mrs.? I don't think I'm able to answer that. But I think I can be of some help. Please be. The daggers, they're antique. They're antique? Mrs. Best shops for her antiques at the Attic Mart on 3rd Avenue. I've often stopped in there with her. The Attic Mart. Unaccustomed as I am to antique hunting. Uh... Goodbye, doll. At the Attic Mart, a guy who looked more worn out than his merchandise confirmed who purchased the dagger. Yes, I, uh, I have the entry here. Uh, Mrs. Best, a uh, fine lady. You mean a fine customer, don't you? Yes, yes. She's here every week, always to buy. Uh, this, uh, this particular dagger, it's a very good specimen of old Persian craftsmanship. I've heard enough. There is perhaps uh, something you would care to be shown? Uh, there is. The door. <laughs> Following A.M., I went back for a tete a with Mona Best. The lady was still unavailable. The social secretary, Candy Joplin, was on hand. I'm sorry, Mr. Craig. What makes Mrs. Best so scarce around here? Frankly, Mr. Craig, I wonder myself. Suddenly, in the last days, she doesn't confide her itinerary. Mr. Craig. Yes? You're a detective. So I am. What do you want with Mrs. Best? Right now, I want to examine her. I'll give it to you cold. The dagger I matched to one in the library case was the same dagger used on Killer Best. I see. Then you suspect Mrs. Best of attempting his life. Uh-huh. Do you? That is an improper question. Well, do you? Mrs. Best has behaved peculiarly. I've sensed, well, jitters. I... Don't stop now. I wasn't entirely truthful yesterday. I didn't think it properly my business. Your question about Mrs. Best's whereabouts... Be truthful now. Well, the fact is, I saw her packed secretly. It seemed to me two valises... I heard her on the telephone making plane reservations. Where to? Acapulco, Mexico. This was the night before last. Skipped, huh? Attempted murder and flight. You mean that... Mrs. Best is presumably a fugitive from justice. A presumable fugitive from justice, I checked Mona Best's clothes closet. After that, I checked airport records. It proved okay. Item... This is Mona Best, flight 7, 11.45 p.m. Destination, Acapulco, Mexico. I let police headquarters check it from there. Well, Mrs. Mona Best landed in Mexico, all right, Barry? And? And nothing. Beyond the airport, the Mexican police have no information. They can't find hide or hair of Mona Best. She's managed to lose herself nicely since her arrival. I'll keep nudging the Mexican police. Don't bother, though. 
Did you just say don't bother to? That's right. Barry, you stamped into my office. You all but accused Mona Best of attempted murder and guilty flight. You, you, you... Now, don't have a seizure. I said not to bother just now because a shaft of daylight suddenly shone in my head. And the delirium tells you... That Mona Best is not in Mexico. Is not? No. But you traced it to a plane leaving New York. I placed her in a Mexican airport. We only checked the name, Mona Best. Could have been anybody, a stand-in, a proxy, say. Said proxy reassumed her own identity on arriving in Mexico. That's why a Mona Best cannot be found. You've got a notion there. Bet I've got the answer to a cute technique somebody developed to uh, get away with murder. The murder of Mona Best. I reported the purported death of his wife to my skeptical client, Killer Best. Craig, the heat's got you. Mona's as alive as you and I. I don't think so. Moreover, I'm not so sure I can accept Mona as a suspect in these attempts on my life. Right now, I'm not so sure I can either. Accept Mona as a suspect, that is. Now you're talking at cross purposes. You said before... To catch your reaction. No, Mona wasn't behind the attempts on you. As a matter of fact, there never were real attempts on your life. Now, look here. You staged them. You poisoned yourself just enough. You stabbed yourself, not too seriously. <laughs> now, why would I hate myself that much? Because you hated your wife more. I won't right now go into your love for her money. You murdered Mona Best. Then you staged phony attempts on your own life to throw suspicion on her. So her absence would be accounted for. So the world would think Mona Best ran away into hiding, a fugitive from justice. You were smart, really brilliant, except for one fatal flaw... Want to know where your trick failed? I can't stop you from talking rot. A fugitive from the police wouldn't make plane reservations in her own name. She'd use an alias. Only thing, you had to have the name of Mona Best on the flight sheet so as to hoodwink the police. You murdered Mona before you staged the so-called attempts on yourself. The social secretary, Candy Joplin, is with you in the scheme. It was she who probably posed as Mona Best on the telephone with me that first time. So was some obliging proxy in with you. I mean, the one who took the plane ride to Acapulco. You sure get girls to cooperate, handsome. Now, the high-voltage question is, where are your wife's remains? In a culvert. Up near our hunting lodge. I didn't kill her, Craig. It was an accident. We were out hunting deer in season. Mona did weird things with camouflage. I shot her accidentally. I was in a panic. I didn't think the truth. Cut. You're confusing me with the jury. Even if you convinced me, I couldn't acquit you. I'm only the guy making the arrest, client. You've been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Screen for Murder, was written by John Robert. Next week, it's a strange story titled Murder in Three Acts, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, a blonde, a bookie, and a gentleman of no distinction form a partnership in crime, only to find that the road to the hot seat is paved with bad intentions. Good night, folks. See you next week. The National Broadcasting Company has brought you Barry Craig, confidential investigator starring William Gargan. Featured in the role of Candy was Fran Carlin. This is Don Pardo speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.